welcome to the Glorious Game of Life Ministries. Mentorship teaching. It's been a little while. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Want to welcome you to the Glorious King of Life Ministries. Mentorship teaching. These are the songs which introduce and close the program. Mentorship teaching. Want you to share with somebody who you think needs to hear what we have to offer today. Yes, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 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 I don't have much time. I want to just take this song down. I want to take this song down. And I want to welcome you to the Glorious Kingdom Life Ministries Mentorship Teachings. And today I want to talk on something that I've titled Purpose and Benefit of Tests and Trials Purpose and Benefit of Tests and Trials Let us pray. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your word. Lord, we ask that you minister to us in an explicit way. Teach us, Lord, to understand the purpose of test, the purpose of trials, Lord, and the benefits, Lord, that of test and trials, so that, Lord, we know how to comport ourselves, we know how to behave ourselves, we know how to operate when we are faced with tests and we are faced with trials and we are faced with the vicissitudes of life. Thank you for my brothers and sisters who are online right now. Thank you for those who will come online later on. We just bless and we glorify you. Take all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. So today I said, like I said, I'll be talking on purpose and benefit for tests and trials. What are the reasons? What are the purpose? What, what are the purposes for which we go through tests and trials? And what are the benefits of tests and trials? Now, if we turn our Bibles to James, James is... Or one of the letters written to the Hebrew church James chapter 1 and I want to read verses 2 and 3 then we jump to 12 so verse 2 said my brethren I'm reading from the old King James it said my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation knowing this that the trying of your faith worketh patience it says my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Verse 12 to verse 17. Verse 12 reads, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Verse 14. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own loss and entice. Then, when loss has conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the father of light with whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning 
the Bible begins, James begins by telling us from our text here, after introducing himself, he said, we should count a joy when we fall into diverse temptation. We should count a joy when we fall into diverse temptation. And what the Bible is saying to us is that the temptation, the trials, the test, they come to try our faith. To try our faith. There are times we say that, you know, we believe God, we have faith in God, and we trust God. And then God will give us tests. It's just like a student going to school. Before you are promoted, before you are qualified for the next level, you must go through examination. Midterm examinations, final examinations. And the purpose of these examinations is to make sure, to ensure that what you learn in the course, you, the teacher wants to know whether you understood it. So for days, the teacher is going to the teacher is going to give you test. So God does not bring temptation our way. God does not bring trials our way, but God allows us to be tested. And the reason God allows us to be tested is to try our faith, to see how authentic, how genuine, how strong our faith is. So believers do go through trials. Believers do go through tests. Believers do go through testing time. They go through the time of challenges. Believers go through the time of temptation. But the purpose of God for allowing us to go through tests and trials, through temptation, one way or the other, is to test our faith. Because the Bible says, for the testing of your faith, work at patience. So God wants to test your faith because your faith is not going to grow until your faith is tested. Your faith, listen to me, before David could develop faith to kill Goliath, David needed to have faith to kill the lion and the bear. And when David developed the faith to kill the lion and the bear, it became a reference for David. That David understood and knew that he could face Goliath and defeat Goliath. Before Daniel could uh, 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 believe God to, to ascend to the place of leadership, Daniel needed to believe God not to eat the food that was offered, I mean the king's meal, but to trust God. So your faith will be tested. Your faith will be tried. And what God is going to use, the raw material God is going to use for your faith to be tested are trials and temptation. They will come your way as a believer, as a kingdom person, as a son of God, as a daughter of God. You are going to face trials. You are going to face temptation. You are going to face the vicissitude and the issues of life. And the purpose for God allowing you to go through testing time is to try your faith. To see whether your faith is strong. Now listen to me. We are adults and we can hold two five gallons of, 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 of water. We can hold tote a bag of rice, cement or sugar or whatever. Because our hands were exercised. You exercise your hands and your hands, your muscles begin to develop. So today you can touch heavy things. You were not just born and you started toting heavy things. You needed to exercise your muscles. And the more you exercise your muscles, the more your muscles grew. And your muscles grew to the extent that you can touch heavy things, you can pick up heavy things. Why? Because your muscles were tested, they were tried, they were proven. So God wants to test our faith. God wants to try our faith. God wants our faith to to, to, to grow. So God allows trials, God allows temptations, God allows the test of life for us to be faced. Maybe your own test may be sickness, your test may be economic problem, your test may be or maybe people, conspiracy from people. Your test may be a loss of some something special to you. One test or the other. But you see, the more you face challenges, the more God wants to train you, train your faith, so that your faith will develop. Uh, listen to me, uh, uh, Joseph had to go through stages, different stage of test, because God wanted to prove him. God wanted to develop his faith because where God was carrying Joseph demanded a certain level of faith, a certain degree of faith. So for Joseph to develop that faith, God needed to exercise, God needed to train Joseph and the training that God gave Joseph by allowing Joseph to face lots of tests, to face lots of issues. So Joseph faced those issues and Joseph went through those issues. But those issues were meant to develop Joseph's faith 
and Joseph grew fit. In the same way, God is allowing you as a child of God, as a son of God, as a daughter of God, God is allowing you to go through the time of trials, the time of tests, the time of facing challenges. Because God wants to develop your faith. God wants to try your faith. To try your faith. Your faith will be tried by patience. So it takes patience and God wants to exercise your faith. Now, you know, I said something sometimes ago. I said, I pray for God to give me patience. But what God did, God brought unreasonable people my way. God brought people who were giving me hard time my way. Why did God do that? How will I know that God has answered my prayer of patience? How do I know? If I have patience for towards those people that God allowed to come my way, then I know my prayers have been answered. But if I do not exercise patience, that means I still need to pray some more. My prayer has not been answered. You see, trials and temptations are good depending on how we respond to them. The problems we face, the issues we face, the obstacles we face, because, you know, I, I, I'm just thinking on this, that there can be no miracles without obstacle. There can be no crown without cross. So God will allow these things to come because, I mean, so that they can test us. And these things are good because they will help us to elevate us. They will help us to cause us to come to the place of our greatness, to the place of our fulfillment to the place of our destiny they are good but it depends on how we respond to crisis how we respond to trials how we respond to the test that of life that comes our way i just want us to look at three subtopics quickly as we conclude this message the first subtopic i want us to look at the purpose the purpose what is the purpose of trials and temptation what is the purpose now you see God allow us to go through trials and temptation to test for the following reasons. Number one reason why God allow us to go through tests and trials, number one is to try our faith. God wants to try our faith. God wants to see, God wants us to see whether our faith is growing, whether our faith is strong, whether the faith we profess that we have in God, what are the faiths? You know, sometimes you say, I love God. God, I love you. God, I love you. Now, God wants you to see whether you love him or not. So, your faith must be tried. So, God allow you to go through tests and trials because God wants to try your faith. God wants to test your faith. The second reason why we face trial and temptation is to produce patience. Is to produce patience. You see, when you go through the Bible says in verse uh, 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 2 or uh, 3 of, of James chapter 1 where we read, the Bible said, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith will work patience. God wants to produce patience in us. What is patience? Waiting on God. Waiting on God. Waiting on God. So God wants to see how will you respond when you are faced with crisis, when you are faced with misconstruction, misconception, misrepresentation by people. How do you behave? Do you fight? Do you curse? Do you uh, 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 throw stones? How do you behave? So God wants to produce patience. And what God will use, the raw material, to produce patience in us is to allow us to face some tests and some trials. Number three, uh, we go through trials and temptation and, and test of time so that God will build our faith so that our faith will be built you see you cannot your arms will not be strong if you don't exercise it now I'm not talking about going to the gym but maybe you exercise your hands but the baby will exercise the hand by first maybe holding the mother's breast holding the bottle to suck holding the finger of the parents holding something from that level the baby begin to exercise the hand till the baby hand grows and the baby is able to take up a, a, a five gallon or five liter water the baby is able to pick up the, the person the, the, as the baby grows that person is able to pick it a while because they exercise it it is built so your faith cannot grow if you don't exercise your faith so your faith must be exercised so god allow you to go through trials so that you will exercise your faith yeah sometimes People who are supposed to do stuff, everybody back off on you. People who you are looking at that are supposed to have your back, 
that are supposed to stand for you. They join your enemies. They go against you. And you look around. There is nobody to turn to. There is nowhere to look to. Then you begin to look to God. David said, I look unto the hills from whence come my help. He said, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of the heaven and the earth. Now, there was nobody to turn to. So David had to exercise his faith. People think that David just came from the blue and just uh, defeated Goliath. No, the faith that David used to de the defeat Goliath, that faith was developed over time. That faith was built. So God allowed us to go through crisis, to go through trials and tests to build our faith. Number four, number four, God allow us to go through tests and trials to give us testimony. God wants to give us a tangible testimony. You see, because the testimony is the result of the test you took that you passed. Testimony is the result of the test that you took and passed. So when you come to testify, you are telling us that I was faced with a test, but I overcame the test. So I have come to testify. Hallelujah. The Lord will cause you to testify in Jesus' name. Now, so, so the, 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 the Lord will cause you to testify. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us, it says, I mean, excuse me. So we say that, we say here that uh, uh, trials and temptation comes our way to give us testimony. Now, many of us do, have not testified for a very long time. We don't testify. And God wants us to testify. God wants us to testify. So when you go through tests, you go through trials, you go through temptation, then you are qualified to testify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So tests and trials are there to produce testimony. If you have, if you see a man who has testimony, if you see a woman who has testimony, it means that man, that woman have gone through tests. And they pass the test. They've gone through trials. And they pass the trials. They've gone through temptation. They've gone through crisis. And they survive. So they have come to testify. To tell you how they got over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it comes number four. We say to give us testimony. Number five. We are faced with tests and trials. We are faced with tests and trials. Tests and trials come to allow us to see the glory and the intervention of God. Now, you see, you will never know that God is powerful until you are faced with tests and trials, until you are faced with problems, until you are faced with temptation, until you are, you are faced with the vicissitude of life. Then you see the glory of God. Then you see the intervention of God. Oh, this reminds me about the children of Israel when they were leaving Egypt. Before them were the Red Sea. Behind them were Pharaoh and his host coming to attack them. They could not go to the left, they could not go to the right. But you see, they saw the glory of God in that crisis. If the Red Sea was not there, they would not have seen the glory of God. They would not have seen the power of God to split the sea. So the sea was there as a way to make them to see the glory of God. I remember somebody asked Jesus in the Bible, in the book of John, they said, who was born, who, who sinned that this young man was born blind? Who sinned? And G is it the parents or who? Jesus said, not of this man, nor his parents sinned. He said, but that the name of the Lord will be glorified in his life. That is why he was born blind. And Jesus showed forth the glory of God. When you are going through tests and trials, the purpose of God is to glorify himself in the midst of that test and trial. It's also for him to intervene into your case. God wants you to know that he can supernaturally intervene into whatever situation you are going through. Number six, the last, the final one, purpose, purpose, purpose. For, for tests and trials. The last one, they say, for you to be promoted. Tests and trials come as a way for your promotion. You see, every time, like in the psych, like in the, 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 the regular school, you, you take tests, when you pass the test, when you pass the test, you are qualified, you are qualified, when you take the test, you are qualified to, to, to go to the next level. You are qualified for the next class when you take tests. So when you face the tests and trials of life, you become qualified, you become a candidate for promotion. So every time tests and trials come, it comes to promote you. Listen to me, David killed the bear and the sheep. 
David was promoted to face Goliath. David killed Goliath. David was promoted to become a, a part of Saul's army. David was there. Saul tried to kill David. Saul persecuted David. David survived the test and the persecution of Saul. David became qualified to become the king of Israel. So every stage there is a test. And as you face the test, you become qualified. That's why the Bible says, count it all joy when you face different kinds of trials and temptation, knowing that the work, the trying of your faith, work at patience. The trying of your faith, work at patience. Hallelujah. So it comes for your promotion. Number two point, facts. Facts about tests and trials. Let us look at some facts about tests and trials. Where we read from our text, from verse 12 to verse 17, the Bible gave us some facts about tests and trials. From verse 12, it said, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. I just talked about promotion. You are blessed when you endure temptation. When you do not give up in the face of tests and trials. When you do not give up because the devil wants you to give up. The devil wants you to throw in the tower. The devil wants you to deny God. The devil wants you to, you know, give up your faith. The devil wants you to give up your confidence in God. The devil wants you to give up your trust in God. But the Bible says, blessed are you if you do not give up. If you do not give up in the face of trial. In the face of temptation. The Bible says you are blessed and you will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that, I mean, to, to them that love him. Now, the Bible says, let no man say when he is tempted, I'm tender of God. That's one fact we need to know about, about trials. God does not tr bring trial your way. God does not tempt you. Temptation trials do not come from God. They do not come from God. God will allow them to come to build your faith, to Go, I mean, the, the six things we just need for you to experience them, but God does not tempt you. God does not uh, 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 bring persecution your way. God does not. God allows it to come your way. The Bible says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. The Bible says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn. You know? Then let's look at verse uh, 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 16. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Now you must understand that God cannot tempt you with evil. Neither is he tempted with any evil. God is a good God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. But meanwhile, God can allow it to come your way because God wants to build your faith. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. We're looking at facts about tests and trials. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 13. The Bible says, in verse 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible says, There are no temptation taking you, but such as common to men. You will, the Bible says you will never face any temptation that nobody else has faced before. You will not be the first person to face that trial you are going through. You will not be the first person to face that problem you are going through. The Bible says every trial you go through, somebody has gone through that trial before. Somebody has faced that temptation before somebody has faced that problem before but then the bible also says that no there is no temptation that comes to you that is not common to man but the bible says god is faithful now one thing you need to know in the midst of your trials in the midst of your temptation in the midst of the issues you face with life you must one thing you must always know and keep at the back of your mind that god is faithful know that Know that, that God is faithful. That that temptation, that trial, in the midst of it, God is faithful. The devil wants you to question the faithfulness of God. That's why the devil strikes you with tests, with trials, with persecution, with crisis, with temptation. He wants you to doubt the faithfulness of God. But in the midst of your trials, do not lose this, that God is faithful. And he said also, not just faithful, but God will not allow you to be tempted above that which you are able. Now, that means every temptation you face, you are able to bear it. That is the reason why God allowed it to come your way. If you could not bear the temptation, if you could not overcome that temptation, God was never going to allow that temptation to come your way. That means there are so many trials, there are so many issues that the devil wants to bring our way, but God black it. Simply because God knows that we cannot bear it. God knows that we cannot stand it. But the, the, the moment God allowed it to come, 
because we can beg. That's why you are alive. So the Bible says, God will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able. But at the same time, God will, with the same temptation, make a way out for you. Hallelujah. The key word here is that God is faithful. God will never allow you to be tempted above you are able. And every temptation that will come your way, that God will allow to come your way, you are able to bear it. That is the reason why God allow it to come your way. Listen to me. As evil as we are as human beings, you can never look at your three years old child and put a 50 kilo, kilo uh, bag of rice on your head. You can never put a 100 pound bag of rice on your five years old child's head as evil as we are. So God will never demand from you what you are not able to do. God will never allow the enemy to tempt you above what you are able. He will never allow it. He will never allow it. God will never allow you to be tempted above you are able. So that means every temptation, every trial you face, you are able to bear it. That's why God allowed it to come your way. And God will, with the same temptation, make a way of escape for you. That means God will provide an avenue of escape if you do not give up. If you keep holding on to God. If you keep holding on to his unchanging hand. If you keep holding on to his promises. If you keep holding on to his word. He will never, ever allow you to die in that temptation. He will a loved one dies or somebody dies in that temptation god remains god and god is still god hallelujah finally we want to look at the third point the benefit for trials and temptation the benefits of trials and temptation throughout the bible bible characters benefited from trials and temptations in fact the bible says all things work together for the good of those who love god and are the core according to his purpose all things that means the good the bad the ugly everything works for their good everything works for their good everything works for their good the bible said to those who love god and to those who are the call according to his purpose now they, 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 there are so many benefits the benefits of enduring overcoming trials and temptation are enormous the bible tells us that blessed is the man who endure temptation for when he is tried he shall receive the crown of life now, so one benefit is that God elevates you, God promotes you, God lifts you, God, God brings you to the place of destiny, the place of fulfillment. God brings you to the next level of your life. God is not going to take you to the next level of your life without trying you, without testing you. It was simple for God to have taken Joseph from his father's house and carried him to Egypt and made him a prime minister. No, God needed to take out everything out of Joseph that did not look like a prime minister, that did not look like where God was taking him. If you are a queen, God is going to take his chisel and hammer and use trials, temptation, persecution from the enemy to fix you, to make you, to mold you, to shape you into the man, the woman that you are destined to be. Now, the first thing we want to look at, Joseph went through so many trials. And these trials caused the elevation of Joseph. It produced the elevation of Joseph. Joseph's own brothers conspired against him. They sold him into Egypt. They thought it was for his bad, but it worked out for his good. It turned out for his good. Yes, it turned out for his good. And Mr. Spotify lied on Joseph. That was another persecution. That was another trial. That was another test. Joseph was thrown in prison. Why going to prison may look so bad, may look so demeaning. But listen to me. The man that's supposed to introduce Joseph to Pharaoh, that man was in prison waiting for Joseph. So Joseph needed to go through prison to be able to meet Pharaoh. Everything they thought they were doing against Joseph, all of their persecutions, their trials, their temptations, all of the things they were doing against Joseph, they were pushing Joseph closer to his destiny. I see people pushing you closer to your destiny in the name of Jesus. Trials are secret ingredients trials are a mechanism that the enemy will use to defeat himself by using it against you now the bible said only if the prince of this world knew he would not have crucified i mean if the kings of this world knew he would not have crucified the prince of glory by killing jesus the devil lose by persecuting you by bringing trials by lying on your name by trying to bring all manner of you know allegations slanders against you the enemy is setting up himself for defeat in jesus mighty name somebody say amen so joseph was promoted joseph was elevated through trials and temptation what about jephthah in uh, uh judges chapter 11 jephthah father 
Gilead, slept with a prostitute and born Jephthah, and the sons of Gilead put Joseph, uh, Jephthah out. They say, you are the son of a strange woman. They drove him from his father's house. They drove him from the place of his inheritance. Je Jephthah did not go to have pity party. That was a test. That was a trial. That was a temptation. That was a serious issue. But I tell you, friends, just Joshua, um, Jephthah, did not uh, say to have pity party. Jephthah went to prepare himself. And the Bible said, in the fullness of time, Ammon made war with Israel. And the elders went to seek Jephthah. They went to look for Jephthah. And they brought Jephthah. Their trial helped Jephthah. You know, sometimes you are too comfortable. You are too relaxed. You are not moved. So God sometimes allowed pressure. You remember uh, 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 Hannah? It took Penina to provoke Hannah. That was a trial. Hannah and Penina was try uh, was, was prosecuting Hannah was disturbing Hannah Penina was a thorn in Hannah's flesh Penina troubled Hannah harassed Hannah the Hannah got fed up with the harassment of Penina Hannah ran to Shiloh and the Bible says she prayed like she had never prayed before now listen to me trials push Hannah to prayer and it brought and it caused Hannah to make a vow and born a son called Samuel, who from Dan to better that everybody would, everybody knew him to be established a prophet. Benina has so many sons and daughters, but we never heard about them. Uh, Hannah had later on some other children, we never heard about them. But the one that brought the test, the trial, you see, until you are pressured, until you are pressed, what in you will not come out. The benefit is that when you are pressured and you are pressed, what in you will find manifestation, will come out, will find expression in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we see here Jephthah became the leader of Israel through trials, through tests. He was pushed. To become a leader what about david david faced so many trials these trials raised david till david became a king i told you about it that david faced trial even from his fathers from the very father and his mother from the very beginning how do i know david said though my mother and my father forsake me the lord will pick me and say i look onto the hills from whence come my help my help doesn't come from my mother nor my father because david i believe was kind of rejected i believe david was kind of treated as a second class child because i know it because when they came to the father the house of david's father to look for a king david father forgot his own son when he said your sons one of your sons is a king he forgot david but listen to me through all of these trials david pushed his way david pushed his way onto the place of stadium david pushed his way till david became king it was the pressure from the test and the trials that david faced that brought David to the place of prominence. As we are going through tests, that's why I said tests and trials are good. But it depends on your attitude while going through the test, while going through the trials. Your attitude will make it good or bad. Amen. What about Daniel? Daniel faced so many tests. Daniel was thrown to the lion's den. Daniel and his friends decided not to eat the king's food. But the Bible said when the lion could not kill Daniel, when Daniel went into the den of the lion and the lion could not kill Daniel, you see, because the Bible said God will, with the same temptation, make a way out for you. So God made a way for Daniel that the lion could not, that the lion did not eat Daniel. But afterwards, Daniel became elevated. He became promoted. And it was announced that everybody should worship the God of Daniel. Friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They refused to bow down to the image of Nebuchadnezzar. That was a form of test. But yet, they were elevated after the test. Every time, mark this, read your Bible well. Every time you go through test, there's elevation. There's elevation awaiting you. What about Jesus? The Bible said, Jesus, for the crown that was set before him, he endured the cross. The cross was the trial. The cross was the temptation. The cross was the test. The cross was the persecution. The cross was the hardship. But the Bible said, Jesus looked beyond the cross. When he saw the crown, the joy, the joy, the happiness, the peace of, of, of the crown made him to endure the cross. And because Jesus endured the temptation, because Jesus endured the test, because Jesus endured the trials, the Bible says he was given a name that is greater than every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, 
every knee shall bow pertaining to things in heaven on earth and beneath the earth i want you to understand brothers and sisters that jesus had to endure the cross to get to the place of glory he had to endure the cross what cross is before you what is the trial what is the issue that is going you are going through you don't need to give up you know we have a saying that persistence breaks resistance if you persist you will break resistance nothing can resist a persistent man nothing can break a persistent woman nothing can stop you as blind Bartimaeus when he shouted Jesus son of David have mercy upon me when the people told Bartimaeus to shut up the Bible said he shouted the more and he got the reward he got the benefit hallelujah Jesus attention was called and immediately blind Bartimaeus eyes opened Jesus had to endure the cross what are you going through right now what are you faced with right now what is the challenge in your life what is that thing that is that looks so insurmountable that looks so high that looks so huge oh the last time i checked the bible said who art thou oh great mountain before zerubbabel oh hallelujah put your own name there who art thou oh great mountain before success hopes him thou shalt become a plain hallelujah yes there's benefits when the enemy thinks he's bringing trials, temptation, persecution your way, he is using it to elevate you. Mr. Spotify thought by putting Joseph in jail would have ended everything, would have sealed everything, would have stopped everything. But her putting Joseph in jail was pushing Joseph to become the man God destined him to be. Joseph's brothers thought by selling him as a slave, they were killing his vision, they were killing his dream, and it was the end of Joseph. No! Selling Joseph to Egypt was a part of the plan so that Joseph will go to Egypt and Mr. Spotify lying on Joseph to go to prison was part of the plan so that Joseph will come to the place of becoming the father of Pharaoh. Listen, Joseph would have remained in that house without Pharaoh knowing Joseph, without Pharaoh hearing about Joseph because after all, Joseph was a slave. He was a slave. They would not have known about him, nothing. Nothing they would have known about him. But Joseph, Mr. Spotify, had to lie so that he would go to jail. So that Pharaoh would get to hear about Joseph. Joseph had to interpret the dream. Those guys were waiting for him there. All things work together for the good of those who love God. And are called according to his purpose. Listen to me. You love God. You are called according to the purpose of God. All things will work for your good hallelujah let me read this final scripture and close it was about paul the apostle paul said in second timothy 1 12 second timothy 1 12 he said for the which cause also i suffer these things nevertheless i am not ashamed he said i'm suffering all of these things i'm going through i'm, I'm going through persecution i'm going through misconstruction misrepresentation excuse me a minute i'm I'm going through misconstruction, misrepresentation. I'm going through a lot of trials. He said, but nevertheless, I am not ashamed. I am not ashamed. Why? Because I know whom I have believed. Oh, hallelujah. I know the person I have believed. You see, when you are faced with trials and temptation, you don't need to look at the size of the problem. You don't need to look at the, 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 the magnificence of what you are going through. God recognized the mountain before Zerubbabel. God said, who are thou, oh, great mountain? He said the mountain was great. He said, but you will become a plane. You will become a plane. Because God is bigger than any problem that you are going through. God is bigger than any test you are faced with right now. God is bigger than any trials you are going through right now god is bigger than any mountain that is standing before you god is bigger than that goliath that is in your way so paul said even though i'm going through all of these things all of these trials this misrepresentation this misconstruction people lying on me they are forming conspiracies at my workplace they want me sacked they want me dismissed but nevertheless i am not ashamed i'm not ashamed why because i know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is 
able. That's the key word there. I'm convinced that he is able. You serve an able God. I don't know what you are going through. I don't know what's the test you are faced, faced with. I don't know what the trials you are faced with. But your God is able. Somebody say, my God is able. Your God is able. No matter what the case is, no matter what the situation, my God is able. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said to the king, Oh king, if it comes to the matter of worship, we are not careful to answer you in this one. We are not afraid to answer you in this one. Listen to me, king. Our God is able to deliver us from your fire. He's able. Then he said, nevertheless, even if God does not deliver us, we will not bow. We will not bow. You serve an able God. Your God is able. That is the reason why the project you want to carry out is bigger than you. The things you want to do, the level you want to carry your ministry is bigger than you. Everything you want to do in life is bigger than you because you are not looking at your strength. You are looking at your God. He is able. Humanly speaking, David could not stand before Goliath. But God is able. So Paul said, even though I'm faced with these things, I'm not ashamed. Because I know the person I believe. He is the one that parted the Red Sea. He is the one that caused the lion to fast for Daniel. He is the one that raised the dead. He is the one that, 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 that caused the Jordan to reverse. He is the one that did all of the great and mighty things. He is the one that brought me to wherever I am today. He is the one that spared my life. He is the one that would have been dead today, but he's keeping me alive. He is the one that woke me up this morning, not my alarm clock. But it is because it is he that woke me up this morning. And my God, I know whom I have believed. I know him. I have a relationship with him. I have friendship with him. I know him. I know his deeds. I know his ways. I know his acts. I am his son. I know whom I have believed. Then he said, I am persuaded. I am convinced. I am convinced. Are you convinced? Are you convinced? You know, too many of us are saying we are Christians, but we are not convinced. That is why we are compromising in our lives. That's why we continue to drink alcohol. That's why we continue to live in sexual immorality. That's why we continue to go to juju people, even as pastors for power. That's why we continue to do stupid things, because we are not convinced. Our, action, our actions and inactions do not show that we are convinced. He said, but I'm convinced that he is able to keep that which I've committed to him. What have you committed to him? Your life, your future, your destiny, everything you are, you have committed it into his hand and you are convinced that he is able to keep it. Friends, thank you for listening to me. You can share this video. Somebody going through tests and trials right now. They are about to throw in the towel. They are about to give up. They are about to say, it is finished. They may need to listen to this message. Share this message with them. Let them listen to it. It will help them out. Somebody is faced with a whole lot of issues. They want to kill themselves. They want to give up. They want to throw in the towel. But tell them not to give up because it is not yet over. That crisis, that trial, has come for their promotion. If they will endure, if they will just hold on a little and trust the Lord a little, their lives will be promoted. They will experience elevation. God bless you. God cause a face to shine on you. God favors you. Father, I just thank you for my brothers and sisters listening to me and those that will listen later on. Meet every one of us at the point of our knees. Father, some are going through terrible trials. Some are going through some issues, Lord, that seem unbearable. But you stay, God. We ask your intervention that you will glorify yourself in their lives. Lord, that you will exalt yourself in their lives. That the shackles, the holes, the power, the influence of the enemy over their lives will be broken in the name of Jesus. You will give them peace. You will give them rest on every side. Father, I ask, Lord, that you will give them the grace to endure 
so that you will bring out your best out of them in the midst of this crisis and that you will be glorified lord i just thank you i honor you bless you and honor you lord take all the glory let your name be exalted anybody listening to me that is sick by the power of god i command that sickness to be broken i command healing i command deliverance i command peace i command release in the name of jesus christ lord that your people will experience your touch they will experience your supernatural deliverance power that you oh god will break every shackle break every hole break every influence break every power of the enemy i curse every infirmity i curse sugar diabetes i curse hypertension i curse leukemia i curse every infirmity i command it to lose its potency lose its grace and be healed now in the name of jesus christ Oh God, you are not limited by distance. I implore your blood. That your blood will infiltrate their system and flush out every blood sickness, every disease, every infirmity. That your people will be delivered and they will be set free. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let your will be done. Let your name be exalted, Lord. Help us to go through this trial and come out triumphantly and come out victoriously. That the enemy will be put to perpetual shame and disgrace. Thank you, Father. May we testify. May we testify. Give somebody here a testimony, Lord. That they will testify. Because this problem came for them to testify. This obstacle came so that, Father, they will overcome it, Lord. Let the overcoming spirit rest upon the lives of your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let them overcome let them overthrow the works of darkness let them break every power every barrier and that lord your miraculous power will be released upon their lives and they will experience tangible miracles thank you lord take all the glory in jesus name amen and amen you can visit my youtube page just success k hopson there are a lot of other videos there and it, like will help you and bring you to the place of I mean, yeah, I guess maybe some, one of the messages could help you. And then we are open. If anybody want to help with data, want to help support this online ministry, we're not going to refuse it. God bless you. Thank you. Shalom. Peace. Thank you, Reverend Yance, Prophetess Da, Praise, um, Brother Christian, the rest of you, says Mother. I mean, every one of you that came online, God bless you. Thank you very much. Shalom, peace to you. Amen and amen.